The first city was made with the first seed that came out of Adam and Eve, that wrong seed. After he left the presence of God, he conceived a little boy and he called the boy Enoch, which is a, it's a battle for the push for seed because the seventh from Adam was Enoch and this man lived and never saw death. So Cain named his boy Enoch. He was the first one to push for it. You see, the devil always wants to push you in everything, but God takes his time in working his purposes. And the end is determined from the beginning and nobody is going to stop it. The first thing he did, he built a city <laughs> and he named the city after his boy Enoch. This was the first city but it was a man-made thing and we know in the flood that whole generation was destroyed so God made a covenant with Noah and he said Noah in your generations I will bless the earth what did Noah do he became a husbandman James says the husbandman well patiently waits for the earth to receive the former and the latter rain so Noah was chosen by God, but what did he do? He planted a vineyard and he made himself drunk. And then the next thing, he revealed his nakedness and God couldn't use Noah. Then Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. They all came through the ark. They're in the seed line of God, but they're all filled with defect seed and contaminated seed, fallen creation seed. Every one of them had their own families and they became so numerous. They all came together and they decided they're going to build a city. But these people lived in a land called Shinar. We, we know what happened to Ham. He laughed at his dad. The seed line of Ham was terrible. Ham got him a son and he named him Cush. And from Cush, he had a little boy and he named him Nimrod. And Nimrod was a mighty warrior. He was a, a mighty man on the earth. He was a, a brutal beast. And his kingdom was Babel, <laughs> which means confusion. What happened is he allowed this seed just to grow so much in him that he just wanted to do everything. Now, it's amazing that Babylon was built in his kingdom. Now, during that time, there was a guy whose name was Asher, and he built another city called Nineveh. And we all know the story of Jonah and Nineveh. So these are all cities that is not in the seed line of Seth. And Asher built another city called um, Rehoboth and Kala. And between Rehoboth and Kala, there was a city named Rezin. So if you count them, it was Enoch, um, Nineveh, Rehoboth, Kala, and Rezin. How many? Five. So the sixth city, something happened. And we read this in Genesis <laughs> He says, these people all came together and they decided, we don't want to be scattered. We don't want to be divided. We want one thing. We want to reach God. All the seed came together and there was a battle for seed. And the evil was overtaking the good. But there's a principle laid down in Genesis 1. And we read that principle only in John 1. He says, Darkness will never overshadow light. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. And he divided the light and the darkness. And only in John, we read that darkness will never overshadow light. What happened? They left the light. They went into darkness. But darkness can never get hold of light. Now, what God did is he put that light in us. Now, what happened there in Genesis 10, these this battle for seed is raging and in their heart came, let us build a city so big it will reach heaven and then we will build a name for ourselves. 
<laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll do our thing. God said, no man builds a tower unless he counted the cost. <laughs> so God, when he started everything, he counted the cost. At the end, his name will be the name. His city will be the city. His purposes will be fulfilled in the realm of light. No matter how man messed up, this is why I say Genesis 1, 7 days are literally the guarantees of DNA that was placed in creation. Darkness will never overshadow light. So they had one language. They had one tongue. They all spoke the same mind. They said, we are going to be our own God to a point that God came down and he said, hmm, let's see what man is doing. We better do something because they are now one and nothing will be impossible for them. Everybody says the Lord's Prayer is in Matthew 6. That's not the Lord's Prayer. They asked him, teach us how to pray. The Lord's Prayer is in John 17. He says, Father, I pray that they will be one. What do we have in the churches? Division. God said, study to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word, <laughs> not dividing the body. There's a big difference. The word is the Bible that we must intersect and dissect and find out scripture for scripture and get all these connections. And we must, uh -uh, no, that goes for that. We must divide the times, the first world, the second world, the final world is the church, the world without end. The first world had ends. The second world had an end. We must, we must dissect the Bible and divide the word, not the body. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You can't have grace without truth. If you have grace without truth, you have a movement and it's grace, 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 grace. And everybody is just carrying on. Yeah, but God, God, God. No, you're going to miss the pot totally. You are saved, but you're never going to be on the earth what you need to be. We have to step into the eternal purposes of God. Now, if you divide the word, you'll never step into this. They were at a point where nothing was impossible for them. And God said, we better confound their languages. And they all got different languages. But when Christ poured out his spirit, <laughs> remember I told you, Genesis is the beginning and the end. It begins with God and it ends with God in Joseph. The end, God is going to win. Get it in your brain. Tell yourself, God is the winner. And the end is rest. Is there rest? It's not the end. <laughs> this is growing pains for the earth to wake you up, to understand that you are the answer that God has placed in the world. His spirit, may the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. And it will quicken your mortal body. That means mortal will change into immortality. Yeah, Annalisa, you're not going to die. I don't care if I die or live. I belong to God. Paul says, I'll be glorifying God in my body through life or death. God is now the God of the living and the dead. Now, nothing was impossible. And God separated and divided their languages. But when he poured his spirit, he united us with a language that no natural mind can understand. So the natural mind cannot mix in. And where God's spirit and language works, you will see everybody that prays for sick and moves into the purposes of God, they are all definitely filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues because that language is like the key of opening up the spiritual. Does that say everybody that speaks in tongues are not going to miss it? No, <laughs> you can still decide what you want. But this is the key of opening up the supernatural. And remember, the bondage will always persecute the free. We read that in Galatians 4. So here, something crazy happened. And the people scattered over the earth. And he said in Noah, his sons were islands of people. And the islands of people came together, but now they scattered. And there are so many nations. Come on. 
it, when the curse was there, there was a separation between man and woman. Now there's a separation between nations. But in Christ, there's no more male or female. There's no more nations. Well, I am a South African. I'm not an American. But above me being a South African, I'm a Christian. I am a woman. I'm not a man. And if you're confused about that, I think you should find out what you are. But in Christ, in Christ, I'm not male or female. So all this turning the truths of God around is still that evil seed trying to reach out for God's purposes. You cannot get it by changing who you are. You get it by allowing God to change your heart. So there are so if you listen to all the people that do not know who they really are, they're like, I always felt I'm this and I always felt I'm that and now I'm happy. That's all in the realm of lies. And Satan is the father of lies. Annalise, is it wrong? Mm, I can't be the judge, but let the word judge you. Light is coming to the world. And this is the judgment. People choose darkness rather than light. If you function in the natural, you can, you can reason it and it seems right. But when you come into the spirit, you realize, oh, that's all unnecessary. But in Christ, I'm not a male or a female. But in the natural, I have to live out what God made me on the earth. Because we have to get ourselves knowing who we are. So God smashed their city. Lacquer. <laughs> and you know what they did? They went and they built cities all over the place. The whole place is full of, um, if you go to the east and Europe, everywhere on every hill, on every hill, there's a city surrounded with walls and a castle. <laughs> it was this root that came out that we want God's purpose. We want God's purpose. <laughs> so God went to one of these cities, the Ur of the Chaldees, right in Mesopotamia. And he said, Abraham, come. And Abraham believed God. <laughs> he, be he didn't choose. He believed God. And he left. They first moved to Horan. And then he left his father and his mother and his city and everything. And he sojourned a land of promise that he never got a place down here. It was a spiritual place. But he, Hebrews says, he, he went, he sojourned a strange land, looking for a city whose builder and maker is God.